Our guest today is Krasimir Avramov, The Voice, LA Music Awards winner, Eurovision Contest finalist, one of the few singers with a solo concert in the famous Kolak Theater, home of the Oscars. His singing reaches about four octaves, or more precisely, over 36 tones. Great to have you here, Krasimir. Hi, Stanley. So glad to be here also. On the 15th of December, you had a great concert in uh, Copernicus Theatre, a 2000 seat uh, venue. How was it? Uh, it was great because uh, not often I come to Chicago after having just corporate events for the last 10 years. Finally, I have a little bit uh, a bigger concert here in this town, which is one of my favorites. Just before arriving uh, to Chicago, you had a concert in Bulgaria, in the second largest city, Plovdiv, with guest stars from Italy and Russia. Yes. Uh, the super Italian superstar Silvia Mezzanotte. Yes. From uh, Mattia Bazar. How was this uh, concert accepted there? Well, in Bulgaria, it's my homeland, so it's everything, thank God, is very well accepted. The concert was great. Um, it's interesting that I had as guests Silvia Menzanote and this Russian uh, young singer Galina Korotaeva. Is this a new partner for you? Is it what? Is this a new partner for you? Well, uh, I don't know about new partner because I was working in the last year just duets with different uh, uh, people from different countries. Mm -hmm. I was working with a Turkish uh, singer Nurten. Uh, also Russia and now Italian Silvia Mezzanotti. But my dream was to work with Silvia Mezzanotti because when I was a child, that was uh, Mattia Bazar, that was the top groups in Excuse Italy. So they were very famous. popular in Europe. And uh, I said, one day I actually wanted to sing this song. And I had the chance the la last week at my concert to sing duet with her singing this famous song, Vacanze Romane, which is called uh, uh, In the Streets in Rome. Uh, That's a great song, I, I know it from... Yeah, uh, very uh, popular, and uh, I had such a great time working with her. With her. Uh, actually, she came not just for the concert, but she came to, to talk with me on the, on, on the project we've been working on, and this is actually uh, this famous uh, Italian pop festival contest, it's called San Remo. It's a very, very prestigious uh, contest for music, Italian music. A lot of composer writing music, composers, Italian composers writing music. And, and you, you'll be able to participate in that contest, nevertheless it's for Italian singers. Well, and uh, that was very strictly to be Italian years ago, but now actually they changed uh, the rules and uh, another person from a different country can be part of this competition, but uh, to be attached to another Italian singer. So it's a duet. Okay. Tell me about your recent hit, Keep Control. Uh, it's a very unusual song for me because, uh, you know, I'm famous part of Europe and part in America as a classical crossover pop opera singer. All my concerts with the symphony orchestras are just uh, pop opera, right? this your staple. Uh, yeah, music. Uh, I w I'm one of the pioneers of the cre creating the world pop opera as a classical crossover. Are you the pioneer or one of the pioneers? Well, I think I, I just want to be uh, you modest. Know, modest. Uh, I'm the pioneer of this <laughs> world and uh, created it and it became now people using it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe I saw him.
I love him. He's the best. He's got the most beautiful voice I have ever heard. It was beautiful. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. Say goodbye. I love his music and his voice. I mean, it just gave me chills. George Groban, Sarah Brightman, in mm -hmm. all this field, Il Divo, of course, are uh, in this field, classical crossover or, or pop rock music. And um, so, but this song I did, it's called Keep Control. Uh, it's written by an American composer and lyricist, Anna Montgomery, who live in Los Angeles, where I used to live for 12 years. Uh, we've been uh, living f in one point together. She wrote that song. I never paid attention to this kind of disco, modern disco song uh, combined with a rapper. You were on a different page then? I was on a different, totally different page and I didn't pay attention. So years ago, actually till the last uh, couple of months, uh, I heard the song. She, she did a remake on this song. She sang it and uh, I got inspired. I said, well, I, I think I can do it very well and uh, invited Michael Fleming. He's a, he's a popular singer in Europe, from the United States actually, a rapper. So that's a completely different style from your previous songs. Yeah, I, all I did, it's classical, kind of. Now I'm doing more commercial, uh, disco modern, DJs are in, uh, um, combined in this. You're working now on your third album. Mm -hmm. Will it consist primarily of those type of songs? Yes, w this, uh, the last actually album I'm working on, it's going to be completely only with uh, disco songs, modern, hip hop, house, techno, this kind of combination. How, how it will be called? A couple of DJs. I have no idea how it's going to be called, but uh, actually for now may, may call Keep Control. I don't know he, how you're going to be able to keep control in Russia in February when you're going to be singing for the uh, Vladimir Putin's uh, presidential campaign. Well, I, I, I just got in invited to participate in this thing. I, I can tell more. It seems like a very responsible gig to me. This is a really responsible <laughs> gig. So yeah. I will try to be very... Should say. You should be very professional in order to avoid being arrested there. <laughs> yeah, I'll try. I'll yeah. try not to be. You have to try your best. I'll do my best and hopefully... It's, it's for me, it's a, not a gig, you know. Whatever it is, but it's a gig. Well, being in Chicago a couple of days ago, you got a call from uh, the manager of the world-famous group, uh, Nightwish. What was the reason? Well, uh, the good thing is, first of all, he's Bulgarian also. He was, wor he was the creator of this group, Nightwish. He, he got them all together. Now they're a world-famous uh, touring group, Nightwish. And uh, a couple of days ago, a friend of mine sent my music, new video, to, to him. His name is Plamen. He loved it very much, and he actually wrote me on uh, Facebook saying, I want to talk to you about your music. So I called them today. Um, they wanted to present it back there in Switzerland and the Scandinavian. So I think it's, it's really good because the song, it's, 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 
Did he tell specifically what, what, he, what he liked about this? Uh, he, he compares the song with the group of Modern, modern Talking and kind yes. of George Michael. He said all the ingredients to be a hit are in that song. So we've been, we've been actually, I, I was thinking in the last few years before I did this song mm -hmm. because, you know, people are not used to it to, to see me and hear me with this kind of music. So I had to be very, I was touching were, very were taking, carefully. Were working. you taking any risks? Yeah, I mean, it's an experiment for me, but I think it, it worked. But uh, you consider it as a successful experiment? For, at, at the moment, yeah. We'll what, what see what's going to happen. What is the, in feedback? the The feedbacks are all positive. Both from fans and uh, music yes. critics? Yes, uh, well, uh, it's, a, it's only, a, only five days song. It's totally new. It's well, just right on the internet. For feedback. Yeah, we just started it. Uh, it's, I just signed um, with the Balkan television. It's called Balkanica. Okay. I signed a contract uh, last week. So For right the now, Balkan area. Balkan area, there's like uh, 11 countries. 11 countries in the Balkan Peninsula. Right, they're like, right now, 10, day, 10 times a day playing on their television. Also, a couple of television channels, music channels in Bulgaria. So hopefully now to go in Scandinavian, hopefully now to go to Romania. I mean, it's, it's really... So your priority markets are the, obviously the Balkan uh, countries uh, uh, market uh, Russia Scandinavian uh, countries well, it's China all Europe and now focusing also on China yeah. I, I had first uh, the last summer I had uh, several concerts in Turkey uh, I was very surprised by the hospitality and the really great people in Turkey so you like the audience? Really, yeah. the audience is just amazing. They they really love and appreciate the music. They're like heart so taken. So you felt people. comfortable there? Very comfortable. Then mm -hmm. after that, I went to a touring in Russia. Uh, an unbelievable, unbelievable audience. Also appreciating a lot the way they um, invite, uh, the way they, um, how, do you, how do you call it? Uh, their hospitality from the airport till the, the yeah. airport when you go back, it's unbelievable. Very hospitable people. Very hospitable. Friendly. Friendly, beautiful, funny. Uh, mm -hmm. I had a lot of fun. So I'm going back, hopefully now in February, for this uh, big gig. So what uh, market is your favorite? I really want to go to the Asian market. I want to get you, you think that you, you're going to like the Chinese uh, market? Years ago, my producer, Mr. Justin Kim, he's from Korean uh, ethnicity. He was, you know, he was he's a movie producer. Movie producer, art collector, very, very well yeah. known in Los Angeles. So I was working with the Korean community also. And uh, we have pretty much good success. You were a great success. star there in uh, the... LA the Korean. LA Koreans, okay. there are like two million people there. So wow. I had a lot of concerts with them, but I really want to focus now on uh, Asian market because they also appreciate the different music. They love the experimental people who can show something so else. So they're not conservative? No, no, not at all. They not like experiments, all. they like music Absolutely. experiments. Absolutely. Everything new, different. They, you think they that they for those audiences will be a good match for your type of music? I think so. I think it will be great and very sellable. Because you're a unique uh, performer and uh, you cannot be compared to anyone. Well, I, I'm going to leave this to the people to say it. But, uh, well, that I'm saying things that uh, some critics uh, yeah, that's have been what saying. That's what people say. Do you worry about the future when you watch news and how this affects your music do you know what worries me the most is that people became more greedy and in the world wise people are really greedy and i think this kind and of the majority greediness of people or some of the, people? the majority i think this wish to be more greedy and more greedy that that will uh, make the the world collapse and uh, i think the most the more people actually are 
trying to, to do something better. I think the music can help change people in a, in a good way. Uh, I have no idea, but we're living actually in a very role in this process. We're living in a very difficult world, except greedy, uh, greedy people. We we live with with the society where it's very dangerous, very scary. We see uh, tears in almost every other family. There's something's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. I don't know how this is gonna stop, but the only thing think me as a musician and other musicians I'm speaking from mm. beside behind um, from use, uh, use uh, music as a tool to 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 change people's hearts somehow because I think music can really change in a good way to to inspire it to give dreams to people because I think most of the kids even they forgot to, to dream and I think dream can achieve a lot how many languages do you sing in? Do I? Uh, how many? Uh, well, I sing in uh, in English, Italian, Latin, Spanish, Russian, and also I. Some of the songs when I write a song, I got inspired to write my own language. So some of the songs are in your own language. Yes, I just. What is it called? I just were. Uh, I don't know how you call it. If you want to call it gibberish, if you want to. Gibberish. Or, well, but it sounds like a language. Okay. But uh, I really, is, I get inspired to write in this language, and I don't okay. see it in any other language. I just feel it, and I write it this way, and sing it that way. Say something of the lyrics in your own language. How can I say? I mean, it comes like that. Or you can sing a little it's, No, it sounds like Latin. I mean, some people hear their own language. I, w I was, let me give you an example. I, yeah. I was singing in, the, in a bar mitzvah in Beverly Wilshire Hotel a few years ago. Okay. And I was, I was, I had 45 minutes program. So I sang, okay. sang, sang, sang. And then people, I got a, a, a applauding for like uh, encore more and more and more. So I went out in front of the audience. And I, I didn't have more songs to sing, so I decided to sing an a cappella yeah. and improvise and sing with my own language. Just do whatever it comes out. So, the so comes your language is the language of last resort. Yeah, and people start clapping and everybody say, wow, 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 wow. Said so then the owner of this event, the mother of the, of the person, comes to me with tears on her eyes and she's saying, I love the last song you sang in, in Farsi. Their own language? Yeah. And I said, which song? She said, the last, the acapella. <laughs> I said, she said, it's beautiful lyrics. Who yeah. wrote them? And I was like, I wanted to, to smile, to laugh. Yeah. But I was like, wow. I said something in Farsi. Yeah. Who knows? Sometime they can beat me up. So your own language something obviously wrong. is working. Sometimes at that point, till this moment, it works fine. Yeah, from what I know recently in Russia, you also sang... Uh, but Moscone Vechera, a very famous Russian sh uh, song. Oh, that was in, in your Latin. Own language. That was in Latin. Wh where is it? In that Latin? was in Latin, yeah. Oh, that was in real Latin, not that your own language. No, no, that was in Latin. No, uh, from what I know, uh, nowadays it's not so easy for, for a musician uh, to make money, or it's a very different from what it used to be. How can a musician today make money well we live in really uh, in this internet progress and uh people and kids and everybody's living in their uh, virtually life yeah. on internet yeah. so music it's very easy to very accessible and very, yeah, stolen. i mean you make a, you make an album you put it in itunes you put it on amazon and all this but just w if somebody buys your cd and they can, can produce it for free. Yeah. There's so many sites you can but download for free. There's no protection for, for the... Yeah, I had, I had a concert uh, a while ago and um, uh, there was a lining up people waiting to buy my CD okay. and, and signing it. So there, there's a girl comes with made up CDs, blank CD, comes, Crossmore, can I ask you to sign uh, the the CD? I I found all your songs for free on the internet. She was so happy to tell me that. I really wanted to choke her, but I was like, oh my gosh, you're really stealing from me. I didn't I didn't say that, but you know, she was very happy to have my songs for free. 
Okay, so now the opportunities to make money are limited. Well, we we do really sell, but life when you do life, you cannot rely on uh, DVD sales for your major income. To be honest, at the moment, no. But I do co live concerts yeah. where I can really sell. If I have audience of two pe thousand people, full house, yeah. I I sell probably twenty to thirty percent. What about writing books? You you wrote a book. I wrote a novel. Uh, it's called Between Two Worlds, okay. where um, it's about my biography, my life. But I wrote. I think it it's sold out now. No? Uh, it's almost sold out uh, in Bulgaria, though. But I'm. It's translating now to into Russian and into English. Hopefully, to to hopefully to come out in the United States because it's a it's a really inspiring story about uh, the music business behind the scene love stories I, I was living 12 years in Los Angeles so I really had an experience and then I got to be part of this uh, famous uh, European music comp contest so the Eurovision. occasion the occasion for writing these books was the Eurovision contest well that was the, the peak moment yeah uh, it, that story that triggered, you, that triggered you to yes write, to because write. there was a lot of uh, crime stories intr uh, intrigues um, scandals comedy like love music like usual I mean this contest seems to be uh, uh, all the time related to stuff like that oh yeah yeah so I I, I really don't like contest is this a political can you say it's like a Political, uh, Ge geopolitical. I think geopolitical it, oh, abs ab Absolutely, absolutely. It's I. I was. I saw stuff. So it's not very objective. No, people really don't know what's going on behind the scene. Okay. They're just watching somebody singing. But what's? But what? Before you go on stage, before you uh, really represent your country, yeah. you really go to a lot of through a lot of hell. Thank you, Krasimir. We're approaching uh, 2018. What is your New Year's resolution? Well, uh, I, th I think I want to be more, um, I wanted to start working more. I really wanted to, to, comp to be able to go to fitness more. I wanted to, f to be able to get more That's fit. It seems to be similar to most men's New Year's resolution. I know, every time when me. December comes, yeah. I start how I'm going to look better, how I'm, I'm going to be more healthy younger younger or, you know whatever but you know uh we really i really want to be I healthy w uh healthy wealthy and very wise. strong and wise yeah and blessed of course what about your uh, show business career yeah it's included wherever if, if you feel good if you healthy what do you want to accomplish will just come what up. do you want to accomplish in your business next year uh, I don't know about next year, uh, but I really want to have a lot of work. And and in one point in, in my life, I want to get Grammy. That's my dream. So out, your ultimate goal is uh, getting a Grammy. Yes, I know. I would. I would. I would take Grammy one day. I wish you that uh, to achieve this goal next year. Well, it's too soon for next year because uh, to, to do a, an album like for Grammy, what I want to see, uh, how I see it, it's not going to be just a year, may, maybe two years. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Nice to have you here on the program. Thank you.